There's no doubt about it that Hollywood is a relentlessly unforgiving industry, where fame and success can arrive on a dime as a result of luck more than anything else, and evaporate just as suddenly. And that's when the bad reviews start coming in. These actors, most of them talented in their own right, and many of them even major award winners, have nevertheless been suffering through a brutal losing streak of late, at least where critical reviews are concerned. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 actors who only star in the worst movies. 10. John Travolta Travolta's Pulp Fiction-fueled critical momentum hit the skids at the turn of the millennium, and since 1998's A Civil Action, just three of his 29 released movies have actually received mostly positive reviews. To make matters worse, in recent years, the actor has starred in a glut of low-effort, straight-to-VOD action flicks, with four consecutive recent releases scoring 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. This led to Travolta scooping a Worst Actor Razzie Award earlier this year for his combined performances in Trading Paints and The Fanatic. Oof. 9. Mila Jovovich It would be kind to say that Mila Jovovich has a spotty filmography, generally best known as she is for starring in her hubby Paul W.S. Anderson's critically maligned Resident Evil series. Beyond the six Resident Evil films, other iffy efforts include the tawdry likes of Ultraviolet, The Three Musketeers, Survivor, Future World, and most recently Hellboy. She's not a bad actress by any means, but clearly seems more interested in lending her name to splashy schlock than actually flexing her dramatic chops. 8. Kelsey Grammer Kelsey Grammer will forever be best known for his performance as Fraser Crane in the eponymously titled sitcom, yet it's always been a tad strange that despite his charm and wit, he never made a particularly successful transition to movie roles. His less than impressive films range from comedy misfires to appearances in blockbuster misses like X-Men The Last Stand, The Expendables 3, and Transformers Age of Extinction. Grammer at least seems like he's having fun in some of these roles, yet given that his best received work continues to be on TV, it's clearly the medium where he's most at home. 7. Alexandra Daddario Alexandra Daddario made her Hollywood breakthrough by appearing in the Percy Jackson movies, though despite being a solid actress, she has just three acclaimed films on her CV to date. Beyond the Percy Jackson films, Daddario has played supporting roles in a number of poorly received blockbusters and genre films, like Texas Chainsaw, San Andreas, The House, Baywatch, and Lost Girls and Love Hotels. Much of her work is already going the VOD route, with panned films like 2017's aggressively awful rom-com The Layover and the woeful Michael Bay-produced pandemic thriller Songbird. 6. Tyler Perry As much as he might be an industrious producer and director with an estimated net worth of $1 billion, Tyler Perry's career is effectively a graveyard of his self-directed, self-branded drama movies. His only acclaimed movies to date are I Can Do Bad All By Myself, David Fincher's Gone Girl, and the 2016 TV movie The Passion, which he narrated. Though Gone Girl proved that Perry could offer more to audiences, it's clear he doesn't have much interest in doing anything but printing money. And given that it's made him literally richer than God, can you really blame him? 5. Maggie Q Despite getting her blockbuster breakthrough in the late noughties with substantial roles in acclaimed films like Mission Impossible 3 and Live Free or Die Hard, Maggie Q has appeared in just one well-received film since, the indie comedy The Argument. In the decade plus since her breakout, Maggie Q has largely lent her skills to low-effort action flicks and comedies, such as Balls of Fury, Priest, The Divergent series, and most recently the terrible Fantasy Island. To her credit, she never just phones her performances in and absolutely brings the necessary physicality to the table. However, despite all of this, she's ultimately fared much better in the TV world in roles such as Nikita. 4. David Spade Despite having worked in movies for over 25 years, David Spade has only two acclaimed films in his filmography, both of which are actually animated, The Emperor's New Groove and Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. The rest of his career is defined by comedy clunkers like both Joe Dirt movies and Dickie Roberts' former child star, and his many Adam Sandler collaborations, such as the two Grown Ups films and Jack and Jill. He may be doing okay financially, but Spade leaves a lot to be desired at the critical acclaim level. 3. Cara Delevingne 
Delevingne is an actress Hollywood desperately tried to make the next big thing for a few years in blockbusters like Pan, Suicide Squad, and Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Though given that all these films were divisive with critics and audiences alike, and her performance itself was criticized in the latter two, that experiment quickly came to an end. After most recently appearing in the universally loathed drama London Fields, Delevingne has found greater success in the world of TV, co-starring in the moderately well-received fantasy drama series Carnival Row. Given that it seemed like she was on track to become a breakout Hollywood megastar just five years ago, though, her cinematic prospects are looking decidedly bleaker. 2. Bruce Willis no actor on this list has a career trajectory more infuriating than Bruce Willis, a talented actor who, despite being one of the most bankable action stars of all time, has basically committed himself to torpedoing his own career in recent years. Roughly a decade ago, Willis began appearing in the occasional straight-to-video action flick, yet by 2015, the overwhelming majority of his movie roles were being dumped direct to streaming. Since appearing in Looper back in 2012, Willis hasn't had a single acclaimed starring role to his name, with his only well-reviewed movies being The Lego Movie 2, the second part, and Motherless Brooklyn, which were a cameo and a small supporting role, respectively. Conversely, he starred in 20 critically rotten films since 2012, six of which scored an impressive 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. And number one, Steven Seagal. For a brief period in the early 90s, it really seemed like Steven Seagal might become Hollywood's next big action star. However, since 1996's broadly praised executive decision, he has just one notable acclaimed film to his name, 2010's Machete. Beyond that, his literally dozens of VOD genre films are uninviting enough that most critics don't even bother reviewing them, and those that do don't have anything good to say. Given that Seagal shed his stone-cut physique many years ago and has used stand-ins to shoot action scenes for years now, he's clearly just keen to milk what little remains of his fanbase for every drop they're worth. Although, to be fair, Under Siege is good. It's a good movie, but 1992 was a damn long time ago. Steven, come on buddy, it's okay to say no to a movie, especially when it's another dumb action flick written in crayon on the back of a Starbucks napkin. Which is, by the way, a charitable summary of the creative process behind End of a Gun. And there you have it folks, 10 actors who seem to only star in the worst movies. Is there anyone we've missed off this list, or do you feel like we've been a bit too harsh on your favorite superstar? Leave a comment down below to let us know, and drop this video a like and subscribe to see more juicy What Culture content. You can also swing by whatculture.com for daily news, lists, articles, quizzes, and all that other funky internet stuff. I've been Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.